kilometer of underground tunnel. This means that during worse storms or bad weather, you can go to our classes without going, even going outside. But of course, this involves living in one of our uh, 2,300 residence rooms here on campus. Here you have a typical cla classroom. This one is for trading, uh, trading rooms. It's a trading room for, uh, from the Faculty of Business Administration. Now here is you have a state-of-the-art regular classroom, laboratories, public space. So it gives you an idea of uh, the, the environment in which uh, you, uh, if you come, you would be uh, studying. If we move to the academic offer, we uh, offer more than 500 study programs in all area of knowledge. Uh, and as I said earlier, among which 260 are graduate programs. When we say all fields of study, it goes from health sciences to sciences in technology and engineering, forest sciences, agriculture, social sciences, humanities, political sciences, law, education, administrative, business, uh, art, literatures, and languages. Apart from the regular academic path associated with your study program, you can customize your studies to fit your interest, your academic and professional goals. This means that uh, we, over 90% of our, our UL graduate programs include mandatory or optional, often paid internships. You can also add uh, one of the fifth, uh, the five study profiles, uh, either in sustainable development, honors, entrepreneurial, and international, and research. We have uh, 520 agreement with institution over uh, over the world, over nearly 70 countries. Uh, 1,000 students uh, of our students study abroad each year and. About 5,600 5, international students come to study uh, in our campus uh, in Quebec City. To illustrate our research excellence, I decided to show you some of our research projects and centers. Uh, we have to know, first of all, that uh, among other universities of a unique feature, we are one of the top 10 best research universities in Canada with over 275 research centers, four Canada Excellence Research Chairs, 357 million in research funds. And we've been awarded 98 million for a project by the Canadian government for project Sentinel North, uh, which is mainly uh, in the Arctic uh, uh, territory. And we have numer numerous affiliated research institutions, among which is we have the North American largest French language center for health research. So here you have the major project, a research project that I wanted to show you. Uh, we have Alliance Santé Québec uh, that was launched in 2013. Uh, it is a, a partnership in the health and social services uh, with all uh, researchers in the, in the areas, and it's a, it's a very big project, research project. Uh, you have the International Observ Observatory on the societal impacts of artificial intelligence and digital technology. It brings together uh, a lot of researchers from 11 universities in CEGEP. Uh, they all have cutting edge expertise in issues related to the production of the, or use of digital technology. Uh, also, you have the, uh, we have the Alliance Culture et Numérique. Uh, it can encourage uh, stakeholders in Quebec City area to join forces by bringing together organizations, businesses, and individuals with a common interest in developing projects and initiatives that link culture and digital technology. Um, as our specialty is, is, uh, is uh, research in Arctic, we also have a Sentinel North for that pro project uh, that I've been mentioned that I mentioned earlier, and it's not to get to together the best talent in Northern research to foster innovation and create synergy between researchers and the community. If I go more specifically uh, in, in the 
Canada is connected to the fairs, and we have the, the, the areas is an photonic innovation for information and communications uh, and metabolic health. We have a neurophotonics and remote sensing of Canada's new Arctic frontier. As well, I wanted to uh, introduce some of our research centers and institutes. Uh, so here you have on the slide the Center for Optics, Photonic and Laser. Uh, it is the, the Quebec clusters uh, of uh, recognized experts in optics and photonic with five research trusts that you see on the, on the screen. You know, we have a, a well-recognized uh, institute in nutraceutical and functional foods. Uh, the Centre Apprentis in the Health uh, Sciences uh, Complex. Yeah, the Servo Brain Research Center, the Laboratory for New Image, uh, Sound and State, uh, Stage Technologies, Correct Consortium, Institut de Québec en Environnement, Développement et Société, the Convergence uh, Network of Geospatial Intelligence for Innovation. Uh, and I want to say this, that this is not it, but uh, it's, uh, I went fast on the research centers and institutes, but it gives you an idea of the state of the heart and infrastructure that we have to help you realize your graduate study project in the best conditions possible. Investor Laval is also well known for its services to foster uh, students' uh, success. We have a libraries uh, housing six million documents in thousand of electronic resources, medical clinic right on campus, personal and professional uh, orientation, uh, student residences. We have four student residences building, welcoming more than 2,300 uh, students each year. We, have, so we offer social activities, sportive activities, uh, scholarship and financial support, and employment services and the free uh, Wi-Fi access everywhere on campus. Just a quick no note on the sport uh, complex that, is, that insiders commonly call PEPS. It's one of the country largest modern uh, sport complex. Uh, a, we have a state-of-the-art gym, gym on three floors, two Olympic-sized swimming pools, two high strings, one indoor football stadium, one American football stadium, an indoor outdoor athletic track. And on top of it, there are 475 uh, athlete students who are performing in 14 different sport disciplines through our Rouge uh, Club. As I mentioned earlier, international students are at the heart of our pri priorities. Each international student can take advantages of our welcome services, the study, a student, student body program, uh, international students and book uh, activities to discover uh, Quebec City, and conferences on topics uh, such as adapting to a new culture, uh, introducing to Quebec culture, quoting and advice for winter season. These uh, our activities are all offered by our student uh, life office that is in French, Bureau de la Vie Étudiante. Other example of uh, initiative uh, that we've uh, developed to help uh, fostering success of international students, we offer workshops uh, that we've called Dream in French. It aims at supporting the learning of French for Anglophone or Allophone graduate students. And we offer uh, financial support with scholarships uh, to help uh, uh, international students uh, learn or just develop or just master a little bit of their French. Uh, even though at the graduate levels, uh, you can come studying in some areas without having a high level of French. We also offer uh, conferences on keys to, to succeed at the graduate uh, level. Um, adapt well to the context of writing and supervising at the graduate level and all the conferences that help you again to succeed during the study. Um, I have here uh, a student testimony. I wanted to go quick on that, so I'm not going to read it. Uh, but just 
the, some highlights uh, on the on the testimonies that you, on the second page. Um, I, I'm going to say it in Spanish, but uh, Fernando, which was uh, uh, which which is the, the the guy you see on the picture, um, he uh, él observa los esfuerzos para que la Universidad Val tenga la infraestructura necesaria para recibir estudiantes internacionales. Y también lo que dice de la ciudad de Quebec es que, es que tiene una muy buena calidad de vida. So I'll let you read um, his testimony maybe a little on after the presentation, but that's a good uh, that's a good way to to know that you'll be you'll have you live in a very nice environment and it's going to be uh, good for you, like good, it's going to be helpful to to to, to develop uh, and to reach your goal. Now we're entering the, the admission and registration part of the presentation. But beforehand, uh, let's have a look at the financial resources you need to realize your study project. So if we look at the last line, uh, you will need between 16,000 to 27,000 Canadian dollars annually to pay your tuition fees and cover your uh, living expenses. I won't go like uh, further with the, the tuition fees because I'm, I'm, I'll go show you like the admission and registration steps. And you'll see there are seven steps and I'll talk more about the financial resources uh, on the fourth step. So first step, select your program. Uh, second step, prepare your application. Third step, apply for admission. Fourth step, find financial resources. Fifth step, apply for uh, for the immigration processors, apply for Quebec acceptance certificate and a study for RIT. Uh, sixth uh, step is subscribe to the mandatory health and hospital agents uh, from Universidad Laval. And then the last step is to buy you a flight ticket, reserve your room and residence or an apartment outside of the country. So I'll go more precisely into each step. Uh, but I, I will only detail the only the, 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 the five first steps because they're more the most crucial one. Uh, first is to select your program. Of course, you have to check the admission requirements. Um, each program on has its web page on our, our main uh, website, uh, and each uh, program has. Uh, it, uh, it has its program description, admission requirements, which is field and academic. Since uh, these pages uh, are only in French, if you uh, are interested, I would and I will invite you to get in contact with me. Uh, so I have to answer all your questions regarding the, um, the the program you're looking for. But basically, at the uh, Master level, you'll need to hold an, in, an undergraduate degree. For a PG program, you need to hold a graduate degree. Uh, and the most important thing to remind for specific masters and PhD based on research, you can be allowed to do your exams and conduct research thesis in English. The second step is prepare your application. In cases you apply for master or PhD with thesis, you'll need to find a research topic and a supervisor prior to applying into the program. To do, to do so, here are some tips to help you find a professor, a professor willing to supervise. So before you contact faculty members, make sure to personalize your messages to professors Contact only those whose research interests overlap the most with your interest in previous research experience. It's also a good idea to read some of the professor recent publication or some recent work by their students before contacting, contacting them. The message should include an explanation of why you would like to work with that particular professor, your unique experience, and your research interest, or if you have won a draft of your research proposal and how it relates to the professor area of expertise. You'll need to add as well your CV, which is uh, 
or we say your resume, uh, your academic records, a cover letter, and one or two recommendation letter. Also, you can uh, the, the the box you see aside. Uh, there is a link uh, you can access to the research projects that are currently recruiting students. Third step, apply for admission. Uh, again, in the box aside, I'm not sure if you click, I don't think if you click on it, you'll access the, the web link. But there is, uh, it links to the online application. You have to fill up on an online application and upload the required material. Uh, usually at the graduate level, is, you have to, to forward your academic records and diploma, motivation letter, resume, reference letter, and a proof of acceptance from the recruiting provider. The application fee uh, is 84 Canadian dollars. Uh, after that, you have to track, you should track the application and uh, make sure that if you have an admission offer, you accept that offer. Financial resources. Uh, again, on the box uh, on the right side, you have, a, there is a link to our loan and bursaries office website. But I, uh, I have listed the scholarships that are open to international students. You have admission, an admission scholarship. It's $2,000 Canadian dollars offered to newly admitted, admitted PhD students. Uh, you have the Leadership and Sustainable Development Scholarships uh, that is re renewable. Uh, at the end, it's $2,000 Canadian dollars at the, at the undergraduate level. Five thousand at the masters, at ten thousand, uh, ten thousand dollars at the PhD level. You you can have also the uh, scholarship from uh, from research assistance, graduate studies award, or scholarship from major granting agencies, and uh, all those staff uh, they really they can help you uh, on that matter. Uh, also, you can get the exemption program specifically for international students. This means that in, in, instead of pay, paying the international tuition fee, you'll pay the uh, domestic tuition fee. And master level merit scholarship uh, also, as well as another uh, scholarship. The fifth step, find out about the immigration procedures. After you have determined uh, the feasibility of your project, and have all the acceptance uh, document and end, you can start the immigration procedures. For Quebec province, you'll need to apply for uh, the Quebec acceptance certificate. But to apply for that certificate, you need an admission letter from uh, the university. The second step is to apply for a study permit uh, issued by Immigration Canada. To apply for that permit, you need the Quebec acceptance certificate. So it's a step-by-step -step process, as you can uh, as you can see. On there, on the box, there is a link to our uh, uh, immigration uh, web page for more information. So I've done it very, very fast. <laughs> I thought it would be longer. Um, so that's that for now. I would say that. Um, Obrigado, gracias, again, for your uh, attention. Uh, if, uh, I guess, I haven't checked if you have uh, been written, writing questions on the chat or uh, if you, but if you have any general question, you can ask now. And for, I would say, for specific one, I would prefer to send me an email. So, Paolo, do you want to control uh, all questions? All the, of course. So thank you, Marushka. Um, I th there are some notes on the comment box, like on the chat. So um, I don't know, Marushka, if you if you can see the public chat. So the one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there is um, if you, if you go back, Juan Duque, he, he has he has a comment about trying to contact the supervisor. So if there are any recommendations that you. That
can give him. I, I would just ask you if you could speak closer to the mic because sometimes the, the sound goes on and off. Oh, so oh, I don't know sorry. if it's okay. I'll go closer to the mic. Yeah, now, now it's better. Yeah. So if okay. if if the participants want to ask questions, now is the time. So use the chat box to write your questions and uh, and Marushka. Maybe I can will... start out. Hello and welcome to. Oh, lagging. Okay. Yeah. So basically, just feel free to to answer the ones that you're you're able to do live and okay. the other ones. One Duque. I tried to contact a professor at the university, but to uh, to be my director of work, let me just read it first. And Um, yeah, what do I, I would say it's like, well, the, the first thing would be if you can uh, forward forward the message you've been sending to professor and uh, to wish professor, uh, but it depends the way you've been approaching the professor, I would say. As I mentioned in my presentation, there is a way to, because professors are receiving a lot of requests for uh, to supervise students. Um, and uh, if they don't uh, reply, it's maybe you haven't been attractive. Uh, I, I would say that they, you have maybe to, to, to find another way to uh, to have professor being interested in, uh, in your um, application. Uh, but maybe you should send me uh, the email so I can help you get in contact with uh, the professors. And another way is also if you know in advance that you're going to have a scholarship from a granting agency, let's say in the country, the CONACYT, the CONACYT, you have a CNPQ, CAPES, it would be would be worth it to mention it uh, like early in the email. So that would be um, uh, more interesting for, uh, for the professor. Uh, same question, Juan Carlos. You have contacted like eight supervisors and one has answered yet. I would also require from you, I guess, to uh, forward the email you've been sending to professors. So maybe if I find a way to help you, I can maybe introduce your application uh, to these professors and will help you uh, make uh, the best of the the, the 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 best I mean to 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 create to write the best email to to be uh, to be uh, interesting for the professor. Uh, first one. Yeah. Okay. The language of master and PhD programs is in French or English. Um, I would say that it's all every, every master and PhD. If you attend, if you have in class for, um, uh, courses, they are uh, in French. But we, you can with the with the research supervisor, you can find ways to uh, to to do your exam in English upon his agreement and to conduct your thesis in English. But in, what do you do at the master's and PG program with thesis? You can start the program doing research. So you work in a research lab. So you don't have to master French. So, so you learn it while uh, being on campus. So at, um, on the, the next year, or like the depends how fast you learn that like you improve your French. But then they can give you a time to adjust to this, the, to the your new environment and and improve your French, and then after you can follow the, the mandatory courses uh, in French. Yeah, postdoc position in biology, of course, but it's a uh, it's a wide <laughs> it's a wide topic. Uh, I would say, yeah, there are a lot of postdoc positions. 
but you have for the postdoc you have to get in contact directly with professors uh, these are the one responsible because they have to write a letter accepting you uh, to come as a postdoc and it, oh, the only thing you need for uh, uh, immigration purposes you need like uh, a letter of invitation from a professor we have uh, medical specialties, of course. Uh, it is unclear. You should maybe specify what, what you, in which area you want to to study. It's a, what do we have a, a, all specialties in in. Uh, we have a, a very big medical school. Uh, recommendation for curriculum vitae is there's uh, some special format. Uh, I would say the the shortest uh, is the best, but uh, I would say two three pages. And um, you start with uh, your academic, uh, like you start with your, your master, like bachelor. Uh, master the the title of your of your studies, and then you can next. Uh, put your publications and then after your work experience. Oh. The documents, if you want to make the, like for any uh, application, we accept documents like all materials in, I would say, Spanish, English, and French. But to be like to most professors, I would say English and French because not all of them uh, master Spanish. But for the registrar's office, we accept, uh, let's say, the the uh, transcripts uh, in in the uh, original version, uh, which which would be in Spanish. Uh, for medical specialties, uh, of course, but you need first to apply. But if you say medical specialties, are you looking for something in research or is, is more something uh, that, that is oriented toward a profession? Because uh, our medical school, school for uh, when it's oriented like uh, for, to, to practice as, let's say, a doctor, uh, there is only one place for international students, so it's very uh, restrictive. So it's there are not a lot of places uh, to for international students, unfortunately. Uh, avec mémoire means with thesis, so it's based on research, on a research project. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't uh, will answer Andres Marquez Vasquez. Is there a public health master program at the moment? Yes, we have. Uh, one uh, master in public health uh, with four sub uh, sub branch. Uh, you should uh, maybe I, if you email me, I can send you the link to uh, the program description. Uh, yeah. Paula, I think I've answered all questions. Do you see any others that have uh, remained? An no, the, the only question, I don't know if, if we have gone through, is one from a, a, a friend that asks, do you have the EP programs? I don't know what, what I don't the know EP what means. means. The EP, yeah, the, the point is like you there. Okay, so if, if yeah. uh, Efrain is able to clarify what, what the EP means, we can probably answer that question. That's, that, that was the only thing I noticed. In the meantime, there's a new question from Laura. Uh, 
Okay. Lara, uh, well, you need at the master and PG level with cases in, in specific areas. I would see science and engineering and health uh, science, you and forest agriculture. Um, it's all like, I mean, it's upon agreement from the research director. If you receive approval from a professor who is willing to take you as their student, and then after you meet all other requirements, which are like uh, uh, with the transcript, you have the score uh, that, that we require you to be admitted in the program. You don't have to uh, to send an ELT uh, TOEFL. Is that clear? You. I don't know. Probably it would be interesting for um, for the audience to know which, which language that can be used for the French. Because normally, know. if we say like at, uh, if it's uh, for all programs that are not oriented on research, they are not research based. Uh, we would require among among the uh, admission requirements to do the TFI, which is the Test de Français International. And depending on the program, you need to reach a certain level of French. But if you uh, apply for a master or PhD research base, uh, admission criteria are different based on the fact that you have to first to get approval from a research director. If he believes that your level of, uh, of English or French is enough, then you can be admitted without uh, sending uh, a TOEFL or a ELTS or a, a TFI. They will look at any at other uh, the, the other requirements that would be your research area, your scores, uh, you, the, the, uh, your publication, uh, the reference letters. Euh, je vais répondre en français. Est-ce que c'est obligatoire d'avoir expérience de travail selon le programme? On va se concentrer. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez, euh, Monsieur Fernandez Sanchez, préciser quel, euh, quel domaine, quel, est, quel serait le programme d'études? Parce que ça peut effectivement euh, jouer, ça dépend. Comme certains programmes en euh, administration des affaires, par exemple, euh, le fait d'avoir une expérience de travail pour favoriser votre admission. Euh, biologie moléculaire. Est-ce que c'est pour la maîtrise, le doctorat? J'attends la réponse de M. Fernandez Sanchez. Maîtrise. Donc, euh, je vais répondre en français. Euh, la mission à la maîtrise en biologie moléculaire et toujours avec, euh, euh, avec un projet de recherche. Donc, comme je l'ai exprimé dans la présentation, ce qui est important, c'est d'obtenir euh, l'accord de professeur qui accepte de superviser vos travaux de recherche. Ensuite, quand vous faites la demande d'admission, vous devez euh, envoyer votre curriculum vitae et, et bon, vos relevés de notes, euh, vos diplômes, euh, des, des, des rapports d'appréciation qui sont euh, des références, des lettres de référence de professeurs ou d'employeurs qui vous ont connu. Euh, et euh, ensuite, votre expérience, euh, ce n'est pas nécessairement une expérience de travail en tant que telle, mais eh bien, c'est sûr qu'à la maîtrise, vous devriez avoir une certaine expérience euh, du domaine, par exemple, de la, de la biologie moléculaire, euh, soit que vous avez euh, travaillé dans un laboratoire ou que vous avez... Euh, 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 fait une certaine spécialisation parce que de toute façon, au niveau cycle supérieur, vous devez, euh, bon, oui, appliquer pour le programme biologie moléculaire, mais avant toute chose, trouver quel domaine de recherche, euh, quelle expertise vous souhaitez, vous souhaitez acquérir. Et, euh, et ensuite, euh, et pour, pour être accepté, il faut que vous ayez déjà une, une parcelle, un début d'expérience dans le domaine. Euh, dans le sous-domaine de la biologie moléculaire. Euh, 
Uh, that it could, Laura is asking, it could be professional experience or have to be experience and research. It can be either one or the other or both. It's just, or it can be just a focus that when you've been doing your um, uh, undergraduate studies, uh, you've been uh, uh, taking some courses oriented toward that spe specific uh, research area. So you have to prove that you have some knowledge of the, of the area. So I think we've covered most, most, no, all of the questions that were posted. Um, yeah. <laughs> now that you have, now that you have Maruska's email, you can you can reach her directly. And um, if there are any questions that you have after this presentation or in the next the next weeks, um, uh, yeah, I would, I would uh, add that just uh, that I forgot to mention that if you want to follow us on our newsletters, uh, you have the link for uh, you see Infolet. Uh, built-in informativo or the uh, our Facebook we have a Facebook lets you know America uh, or you have my contact information I'll be there would be a pleasure to answer all your questions okay thank you so okay, much, Marushka, so much Marushka, for the, yes, for the presentation yes, see you in, in the next webinar take care thank you bye -bye. have a nice day